Welcome back everyone, I'm Slay. And today we're gonna discuss some tips and tricks tied to detailing. Additionally, we're gonna talk about a few mods that I don't really think get enough recognition. So if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button or come visit us at twitch.tv slash k where we play cities a bunch and we talk about all these things live. Now there may be a few things that seem pretty straightforward, things that you've done or tried already. And this is certainly not the end all tips and tricks video. Like I'll probably make like a part two at some point. I just wanted to make a video that talked about some of the things that help me with efficiency and can make detailing easier and a little more approachable. So first we're gonna talk about just some city block type detailing. We've got a few things here with some planters, trees, vegetation, tables. We use some decals to create some different textures. Probably the first thing you guys are gonna be very familiar with is Move It. You can find a whole video on my channel breaking down Move It, but the copy and paste feature is huge, especially when you're trying to save time. And one thing that I want to demonstrate too is the fact that you can use similar trees, planters, bushes, and stuff like that throughout your city. It could be that your theme or regional setting that you've developed may warrant specific trees. It's also not uncommon for me to have one area where I use a specific planter, and then I may reuse that planter, but I might change the angle. For example, on one side of the street, I might have 45 degree. On the other side of the street, I might have them parallel with the road. And like I said before, I tend to use bushes coming out of a theme. So there might be some variation, but a lot of times I'm gonna stick to a certain set of bushes or trees. Sometimes I'll make a palette where I'll have like an area of trees that I'll just pull from. Now, obviously we could copy and paste each bush into this planter, but there's a way to save some time here. Using prop line tool, you can easily make curved angles or straight lines of different types of assets to fill a space. First, you're gonna decide whether it's a straight line or curved line, and then you're gonna click the prop line tool button. That'll bring up a panel where you can set spacing. By unchecking auto default, the spacing will remain the same as you move through the different areas you need to make, which is kind of helpful, especially if you think you're gonna have to revisit a certain size or scale. And you can see how easy it is just to throw bushes into a planter. Now you could obviously do a much better job at spacing these out, but for demonstration purposes, you get the idea. You can also select an anarchy option within prop line tools so that it doesn't prevent plants or props from being utilized if they overlap something else. You also have the option of selecting angles within prop line tool to actually place things. So eventually you get to a point where you're placing 45 degree angle planners and plants very, very quickly, especially using move it, copy and paste. This should hopefully speed up the process quite a bit for you. Something I've talked about with detailing, especially in my basics of detailing video is how to fill up space, creating vertical elements to your cities and stuff like that, especially between buildings can really, really help make things appear more dense. It's an easy trick, a planter and just some bushes with a couple trees. I think the one thing I tend to really, really try to make sure is done well is scaling. I don't want trees to look too big, so I don't want to put a redwood next to a building unless there's some sort of need for it. I'm very, very careful with certain things like that. I, I really stress with the size of bushes, the size of trees and making things look a little bit more approachable and realistic. I use a lot of Steam Workshop assets, which tend to look better to me and gives me more flexibility with the types of trees I'm using. Just a quick thing to hit on is if you're not familiar with my panel where I'm looking through assets, that's find it too. And I also use yet another toolbar mod for customization. So back to prop line tool, I'm setting up a circular planter and I wanna border that with bushes. We talked about the doing a straight line option or a curved line option. There's also circle by clicking that and then setting spacing however we'd like, we can make a perfect circle that borders the inner edge of the planter. So something about detailing that's more theory based would be to utilize different shapes to set things apart. For this, I wanna pick a taller tree. I want this to be a little bit different. So you could use a series of long planter boxes with smaller trees for one thing, but then have something, a more pivotal piece done like this. It sets the building off actually, and it fills the corner of the street, which makes this whole little spot look a lot better. Now, before we move on from prop line tool and what it can do for you, let me show you another trick that I tend to use. If you've ever used in-game pathing, you know that the basic paths can sometimes be a little bit janky. They might have weird edges or weird curves because it almost acts like a magnet towards different edges around it. So like roads or sidewalks that are nearby and it'll create jagged points in your pathing. So what I tend to do is I tend to use bushes to outline things. So again, prop line tool, huge time saver here. So obviously with Move It, you can adjust the segments. Well, as you see me adjusting them, you can also see the change in the edges and how they get a little bit more ruffled. So let's see how we can cover that up very simply using bushes because it's not always something you can easily remedy. So I've selected that I wanna do a curved segment. I've selected the bush as well, and this is kind of what I'm getting. 
Now, it can be kind of a pain to match an angle, right? We can get close, and you almost want the bush to overlap slightly to cover up the jaggedness. So by hitting control click, I'm able to open up an option here to then adjust the curve manually. You can see it's moving the bushes along that angle, but I can polish up a curve if I would like to. I can even shorten it to make it fit a specific area. Maybe it needs to be broken down into multiple curves in order to fill the space appropriately. This can take some fiddling around with, but using the control click button can often help and fix some of the issues you may have when you're trying to align things on edges of stuff that is already created. I will admit, I didn't know about this feature for a long time. So if you've been using prop line tool, you didn't know about the control click, this is probably one of the most helpful features that I've used, but don't feel discouraged if you're just now finding it out. There's also alt click, which I believe will make it so the point, the starting point will stay reserved so that you can pull multiple lines off a starting point. I would definitely take a look at the prop line tool page in the Steam Workshop for a little bit more information on how to utilize prop line tool. Now to add some verticality, obviously we're gonna throw in some trees to fill the space a little bit more and make this look like a nice little pedestrian path. You can go so much further than this if you wanted to, you could add flower bushes, you could add planters, whatever you want. But I think for simplicity's sake, the point is I really wanna show some easy ways to detail areas just with basic tips and tricks. So you may know some of these things, but for someone that's getting into detailing, sometimes time is like the factor that prevents them. Like they're worried about how much time they're gonna sink into a city block. So I wanna make that approachable. And speaking of trees and time, let's talk about forest brush. This is such a simple mod that makes planting a wide variety of trees really easy. If you've been copying trees using Move It or utilizing anything else, I would have you take a minute to take a look at forest brush. I think it's underutilized and probably underappreciated. You can basically create your own brush. You can pick what trees you want in that brush. You can pick the size of the brush, the strength and the density of the trees being placed. Also, you can select the probability of each tree that you select for the brush. This is really cool because it's specific to each tree. So if you wanted one tree to be the dominant tree in the area, you can make that happen. Just by going in and selecting a tree, you can adjust the slider for probability. Now the brushes you make in forest brush will carry on from city to city. So you can use them multiple times later. For example, I tend to have one or two mixes that are sort of generic American trees that I like to use in several of my builds. So open up forest brush sometime, give it a shot. It's really, really helpful and it's great for filling up an area quickly with a cool mix of trees rather than having to individually place trees, copy trees, or do multiple attempts at filling an area with a wide variety of trees. There's a really helpful guide on the workshop for this mod that'll break down some of the functionality and how to utilize the mod further. So let's talk about something I really don't dive too much into and that's roads. Part of it's because I just don't find myself to be a great road designer. I like to design cities and I don't mind traffic just because it tends to look more realistic to me. So if you're like me and you wanna add a little bit of detail to roads, I wanna show you a couple things that might help. I'm gonna place a road at 45 degree angle, which tends to make a sometimes a little bit of a funky intersection. Now there's a cool way to fix this. Utilizing node controller, I can click on the node where the roads meet. I can click the button in the top right corner, make in straight. That'll then fix and kind of better proportionalize the intersection. If you haven't checked out node controller, it can do a ton of stuff. This is just one little thing that I found that has made my life a little bit easier when it comes to roads. Then you have intersection marking tool. So let's get into a little bit of the detailing of these intersections. You can create and customize the lines that you want within your intersections. This could be specific to the region of the world you wanna be in or that your city's in, or maybe you wanna do something different. I've seen a ton of variety from this and it's really, really neat. It's a dense mod, there's a lot to learn and figure out. Some roads will even come with their own preset stuff that you can actually utilize to match what's already there. They have like templates, for example, with, that you can apply once you've started to set up your lines. Now you may be wondering, why are you bringing this up in here and not really diving deep into it? And I would say it's because I used to use decals to do this. Decals that I had to modify using procedural objects or hiding things using different pieces of asphalt to cover up edges and stuff like that to make it work. Now it's practically built into your road. It's fantastic. You can do so much with this. It's a really powerful tool, especially if this is a way to add a little bit of flair to some of your intersections. Not to mention when you're in downtown areas, it can be really helpful to do something like a crosswalk. Maybe you wanna add the dashed lines. Maybe you want them colored a certain way. Keep in mind, you can also save presets. So I've done interchange exits and on ramps to be able to match the sort of American style that I want that I can reuse later. So I don't have to keep rebuilding how I've marked those intersections. I'd also suggest checking out Yumble TV who does a ton of work with different types of mods 
related to road design. And he's broken down intersection marking tool and node controller before. Now I've already done a video breaking down theme mixer, but I wanna to touch on something that gets asked a lot. Using surface painter can be a little bit of a pain, but it's a great mod to fill in some space. There's ways to customize what you're utilizing in surface painter. With theme mixer, you can change the type of textures you're putting down. I would recommend checking out Theme Mixer along with Surface Painter and customizing these to the theme or your map that you're using based on the theme you're trying to create. Now, if you're just trying to create pavement, it'll match the pavement you've selected already for your roads and stuff. For ruined and gravel, you could maybe bend these a little bit to match something else you wanna create. This really dives into creating different textures on grass. This is helpful if maybe you were doing fields or you wanted areas to appear rough in some spots. Now you can see sometimes surface painter can delete like the pre-designed sidewalk with a road. And if you were adding surface painter to a road, it might create a very jagged edge and or leave these little gaps. These drive me crazy. I'm sure some of you will relate to this. So there's a couple things that we can do. One is brushes. Brushes are sort of like surface painter, but they're constrained to a shape. They still have a little bit of that magnetic feel to them like surface painter or pathing does, but you can create these surfaces. Now, Sims won't use them unless there's a path associated with them or layered in. You can see by placing them, you start to get specific shapes that are less interfering with what's already set around buildings or roads. So if you're looking at ways to apply this, I would say maybe it's not a functional thing, but it's something where you want to create like paths that look like access points, or maybe you need to just fill in a gap or something like that created by something else you're doing. Sometimes two networks next to each other that are very, very close can create a very odd texture. So you can do a couple of things to fill this in. Maybe you want to increase the density of the gravel, or maybe you want to change it entirely, add pavement, add ruined, whatever that is, you can do that to set it apart. The great thing is it doesn't interfere with the sidewalk and stuff that you already have around a network, the same way that Surface Painter tends to do. And if you're looking at how to select these and move it, it's a surface that you can move pretty freely. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is another surface type. These are ploppable assets. They come with like asphalt, pavement, grass, gravel, and I think cliffs. Now, how are these useful or different from what we've already tried to use? These are like 3D assets that can get covered up or layered in. Now they're gonna look slightly different, but they're pretty close, you can manage. So if you had something around the edge of a building you really needed to cover up and surface painter or something like that isn't doing the trick, you can utilize this. I've used these in like my retaining wall video to cover up height changes and stuff to make things appear flat. Now Sims won't interact with them, they'll walk through them. But this is really, really helpful for cleaning up some edges, mistakes, and things like that that you need them for. You can also change the elevation. And you'll notice that if it's in a cliff or a hill or something like that, it'll start to cover up the asset. That's again, because it's a flat 3D object. Poppable assets can also be adjusted using procedural objects. So if you're doing more advanced things, keep that in mind. The next tool I wanna discuss, it has to do with surfaces and creating like textures on a grass or, or flat surfaces. So let's talk about extra landscaping tools and ground resources. The cool thing is, is that you can start to create like different textures in different areas. So obviously ore, oil, and fertility all have their own sort of color or texture to them. These can be modified within Theme Mixer, which you can check out in my Theme Mixer tutorial. Utilizing these, you can begin to create some diversity in the grass itself. Maybe you want an area to kind of appear more rocky. Maybe you want an area to appear more green or something just different. This is really, really helpful when you want to start dividing up your map into sort of different areas or giving some variety when you start to zoom out and look at your city. I'll sometimes use one of the ground resources like ore oil to create like a different texture near sand or near water. This is just a little helpful idea. Again, when you're zooming out of your city, you want diversity. You want to make it look interesting. This is something small that you can do where you're not applying more assets and decals, but you're still getting some texture. Now let's jump to something quite different. Parking lots. I've built a ton of parking lots in my cities. My cities are typically American builds, so they're pretty prominent. Now I've built them from scratch. I've built them functional, non-functional. Obviously there's a few different mods you can use, but parking lot roads is probably one of the most popular. These fit really well between buildings where you need like narrow parking lots, for example. Well, something released not too long ago that made this significantly easier. It's called parking lot snapping. It allows your parking spots to actually snap to the parking lot road. This works for all the parking lot roads and I think a few other assets, if I remember correctly. This will work for very dense parking lots. So if you have multiple rows within parking lot roads, you can use it for that. It increases the efficiency so much of getting the parking spots into the parking lot, something that sometimes I was always like save till later. And now you can do it on the fly and you're done. It's fantastic. 
Now there's two more mods I wanna to talk to you about. One is Picker. You may have heard of Picker because of the Move It mod. Now there's a separate version that'll allow you to quickly locate items using Picker in your Find It window. This is super helpful because you can go through props, trees, buildings, anything, even roads, networks, and you can utilize Picker to find that item again. This is really helpful for me because sometimes I place things and I move on and then I need to come back and add something. So you can see as I'm clicking the picker icon and selecting different things, it's locating the building and giving me a duplicate of the building to place immediately. This should speed you up when you're trying to just duplicate an area or you just really need to reference something quickly to finish the spot. I tend to work in an area, move to something else and come back. And maybe I want to add another building or duplicate a building to combine it with the previous version. So it's really, really helpful in that regard. Now, one big thing about detailing is sometimes just picking the right assets. I have a ton of assets, obviously. I'm looking for a library right now and I can't even find it, but there's a thing with assets. Some come very detailed, some not so much. Typically with vanilla buildings, you're gonna get vanilla trees and whatnot. One thing that I sometimes do is I'll use an, a mod called BOB, Beautify Our Builds. This mod allows you to take trees or props from a building and trade them for something from the Steam Workshop. So for example, the trees that are in front of the building are pretty common on vanilla items or assets. I want to take that and replace it with a tree I got from the workshop. So in the left box, I see what tree is currently included with the asset. Now, if there's multiple, you may see bushes, trees or whatever. On the right side, I pick the asset I want to replace it with, which is the blue gum tree. I can replace it on all buildings or just this building. This building actually has a sub building, meaning it's kind of divided in half. So we're going to replace half of it for right now. This can be really, really important to think about when you're putting your buildings in and you want them to blend in with your surroundings. Maybe you've already selected those trees like we talked about earlier that fit your theme. So now you can make buildings, specifically vanilla or just assets that you get from the workshop that have different trees. Like for example, if this had a bunch of pines, but I want them to be oak trees, I could make that change and just really quickly and simply make things blend together better based on what I'm trying to create. This mod also has some really helpful information on the page for the mod that'll help you understand how to utilize it. I would really be mindful about the assets you download from the workshop. We tend to go on there, we download everything, right? But we need to be aware that the more assets we have, obviously it's eating up plenty of RAM. Being decisive about the items and making sure that you only pull items you're really gonna use is super helpful. I've been way more critical with assets lately, especially trying to narrow down what I'm really gonna use and what sort of fits my bar for detail and the way it looks and stuff like that. Vanilla, obviously you get some awesome buildings. Sometimes just switching out the trees can be really helpful. And if you look at assets, try to see what details they offer and if they meet what you're looking for. If they're close, maybe you can use BOB to help clear that up and help make it fit better. With that, I think I'll wrap it here. This is a little bit different for me to do. This is a little bit more of a high level approach over several things over the course of the video that break down different things that have helped me in the past or more recently as I've tried to get better with efficiency at detailing so that I move a little bit faster and I'm not using the more archaic route to do something. And some of that's related to streaming where you can catch us obviously on Twitch where we'll be doing these details and practicing with these tools live. I want to make that still an entertaining space. I don't want to get too bogged down. So finding efficiencies is always awesome. So if you haven't already hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment if you think there's a mod that I should include in the next video. You can join our Discord community if you'd like. We also have a Patreon available if you'd like to support. And of course, I'm always on twitch.tv slash slate3k doing a bunch of stuff. See you soon.